I think a lot of people are looking for a place that the vision is already created. I was on the totally opposite end of that spectrum. I wanted something that was abused and neglected, but that I could see potential in. And that process just started with me looking at properties, and you know, of course people are taking to ones that guys already have trail cameras, and you get to see pictures of deer and turkey and stuff like that. This property, when I found it, had nothing. The only thing I knew about it was when I walked on it for the first time, I saw some turkeys, I saw a few deer. It's like, okay, say, there are there's some game here. So there's nothing there that was already done. It was finished. It was a project that I could put all the work into. I think from the first hour that I walked on this property, I don't know how many times I stopped and just looked around and just took panoramic shots with my camera because I wanted to just capture what I saw. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, if I take out this fence row, this is going to be awesome. You know, I'm cutting down on, on taking one travel corridor down for deer. And, I'm, and this is coming from somebody who has never hunted deer before. I don't know if I slept the first day. You know, I wanted to go back, so I went back the next day. So I probably spent another four or five hours taking the same pictures all over again because I just couldn't get enough of it. I think the hardest part was maybe convincing my wife it was a good idea. I had to convince her that this big mess that you could barely drive a ranger through was going to be worth it someday. And she's like, how long is this going to take? Give me three years and, and you won't recognize it. And she bought in and now I think she enjoys it as much as I do. It's been a fun journey so far. So when dad told us that him and mom had bought a farm, we were a little bit shocked, I think because he'd been really into basketball at the time. Dad is a great basketball coach. He said he wanted to quit that when he had grandkids. And so my husband and I had our first daughter and he said, I, I'm gonna stop basketball, I travel too much. And then all of a sudden the farm popped up. He wanted something for his family to make memories on together. He wanted something for his children and grandchildren to pass down to each other and share those memories together. He was so excited and our mom was so excited and that was enough for us to get 100% behind it. The rain really did it up a lot. Sitting on that point right over there, we had a little picnic when he talked me into buying this land. <laughs> the vision of this property right here. And I said, just imagine what, what this could look like with all these mature pecan trees. I said, it'll look like a park someday. We've rebuilt the pond, we just finished it this last month, and I've got all the groundwork re-leveled. Yeah, this is gonna be a place, you know, that you bring the grandkids and they can go fishing and you put a little dock on it. And it's so hidden, it's just, it's quiet back here. I'm all about family and family business. A lot of the companies we do business with are family businesses. We made a trip to Hawaii. I promised my wife when we got married that I would take her to Hawaii. Once we got there, we met some people there to live there and just really became friends with them. And we've been back several times to see them. The second time I was there, Josh said to me, he's like, you're Ohana to us now. You're Ohana. Well, that's kind of cool. What does that mean? Like, oh, you're family. It's like, oh, I like that. So, you know, when we bought the farm and we started like, oh, maybe we should name the farm, like, you know, Tall Times or the Family Farm. Like, that sounds kind of silly. You know, the purpose of having it was to have a legacy that you leave behind for your kids and your grandkids to enjoy. So how about Ohana? It's the Ohana Farm, the Family Farm. About four years ago, my brother and I, he owned some property, a family farm, and I was looking for property. Compact track loaders were becoming the fastest growing piece of ag and construction equipment in the world. So we said, you know, we probably should develop something that'll help us. So we bought some attachments for skid steers, compact track loaders. They just didn't hold up and they didn't last a year. And we said, okay, we gotta do something about this. So for people like us that wanted to buy really good heavy duty equipment, somebody had to come out with something that was specifically really good for land managers and something that would hold up and would take the kind of abuse that guys like us that want to do that. So that's where our X-Series 
was born, it launched officially almost two years ago, and we've just continually built that product and adjusted it to take on other people's needs. That's where that product is developed. It was a labor of love, because we love being outside. We love doing this kind of stuff. I kill two birds with one stone. I get to manage my land and sculpt it. But more importantly, I get to develop the products that other people get to use and get to enjoy as well. There's always challenges when you have a piece of property. And there's responsibilities with developing land. First year, we never shot a deer. We, we basically just observed the property and got to know it and just tried to cover all four corners of it and learn the wildlife, understand the habitat better. Sitting in the stands all the time, you learn about that stuff, okay, now I'm gonna put a plot right over here and I'm gonna create this new environment for I'm gonna do some more timber management here because every time I go in and out, they want a bed there and I don't want them there. I want them another 100 yards back. So as soon as hunting season's over, January 15th, I've got my map blowing up and I've got 10 projects ready to start all at the same time. Part of developing the X-Series is knowing that there are going to be a thousand people like me that are going to enjoy and be able to use something that really can help them enjoy their land quicker. It's really satisfying knowing that we're going to help other guys like us that just want to get out there and get stuff done. You learn really quick that when you're going in to do timber management or you want to put in food plots, you just don't put them anywhere. I try to keep them tucked as close to the center of the property as I can so I can bring deer in and hold them in the middle of the property and they're less likely to leave. So before you start cutting trees down and stuff like that, I go in and I just kind of chip away. I flag them and I was just extremely nervous about cutting down the wrong trees. And gosh, just understanding what trees were on the property was a big challenge. You had to really feel your way through it. But I take out every hedge tree and locust tree that's in there. Some of the ash and stuff and just clean it up. I just finished cleaning this up this spring and you can just see how much more growth, you know, from the horse floor now is just popping up. So I'm leaving the pecans and the oaks. You know, the trees I think are going to be quality and, and, you know, put some food on the ground, but also open up that canopy just so whatever the brow, whatever comes up now is healthier. And to me, that's timber management. This is the first plot that I created. I left a strip of persimmon trees right down the middle and some pecans. And I put a strip of non-typical clover right down the middle and it wraps all the way around the plot. And it's about a three quarter acre plot. I just dreamed about this place when I first bought it. When I, we shot a drone shot overhead, and this looked like a highway interstate all mm -hmm. connecting. So we named it the highway because it looks like a highway system. The trails were, there were like 10 trails all coming into right here. And this year I put in maximum and I've got the plot protector. It is really taken off. We just need rain like every other farmer. We take a really personal responsibility of managing the land for wildlife. We want to make sure that we give them everything that they need to be as healthy as they possibly can. Having guys from Mossy Oak that know a lot of stuff about it, it's, it's way easier just to call them and ask them and talk to them about it. They've taught me a lot of neat things about producing the right crops at the right time, the right balance of what to put in and when to put it in. That's really a big part of being a land manager or a gamekeeper that you, you have to take into consideration. So this plot, I just created this year, and I call it the L. It's just an it's just an L-shaped plot. It's about a hundred, oh, probably 110 yards long, and about another 50 yards wide this way. I selected this area because this is what I call the north northeast eighth of my property. Never hunted here, 
Never had a blind or anything here. A lot of times the deer I see here, I don't see anywhere else on the farm. So they're obviously ones that come from the neighbors and so I thought, you know, have another place to hunt, hit this another north wind area. I can sneak in you know, from my cabin. It's only about 200 yards away from my cabin. So I put in a Masio product they call full draw. So that's what I tried in here this year. Like, hey, well, we'll see if it works. Anyway, this is gonna be kind of an interesting place. I brought a blind over here to sit in and kind of observe this year and kind of see what happens. But I'm looking forward to spend a little time on this this year and see if it turns out to be a worthwhile investment in the land. Two years ago, I didn't even know what a gamekeeper was. I just thought I had a farm. And then I figured out that talking to guys that were in the gamekeepers and I've become friends with people all over the country just hearing their stories about their properties and it's like, wow, there, there's a lot of people like me that are land crazy. We love the journey. We love building stuff and being creative. Well, this, this plot we named the monument plot because I tried something I hadn't seen or heard of before, but instead of taking all the trees completely out, I just cut them off like four or five feet above ground. So it looks like a bunch of, bunch of monuments stuck out in this plot. I think the deer like it because it's, it's not just a wide open flat surface. There's some tree stumps there and they and they come back a little bit they re, they re-sprout and look bushy and stuff anyway this plot is all clover with the exception of we have one two three four we have four strips of deer radish that i put that i put in just kind of stripped it in there so that they have a late winter food so everything in the background from that point on back there's 150 acres of sanctuary all along this so our food plots bump right up against the sanctuary all the way across the property Two years ago, when this journey started for me, I wasn't a deer hunter, but I did go deer hunting with my son-in-law. He's the one that got me started, and my brother's been hunting deer for several years. This just seemed like a neat challenge. I mean, there's so many different things that I had no idea I didn't know. Is there a right way to carry these? Antlers out or antlers in? You gotta do, you gotta do one in the front, one in the back. That way they don't, they don't hit it. You read magazines like Gamekeeper Magazine and you know you watch shows like Gamekeepers and you, you look at what other people are doing and how they're accomplishing their goals. And those people will answer your phone calls, answer your emails right away, and they know everything about that stuff and, and their products are really good. So I've enjoyed that ability to learn from those guys. You know, a year ago, my youngest daughter, she started working for me and doing all of our media stuff for us. And she's like, Dad, I really want to go hunting with you. She's never been hunting in her life. And I said, okay, well, find a good time. Hey, I'll call you. We'll, you know, I think we'll have some success. I didn't even have my own hunting gear. I was using his old oversized stuff and my mom's and my mom's stuff, just putting it all on. I'm giving her the crash course on, get these rubber boots on, let's get them sprayed down really good, all your clothes. We get in the ranger and and I have my wife drive us across the property and just drop us off a couple hundred yards from where we're gonna hunt. So this is the scene of the crime. <laughs> you know, going back last year, your first time in the stand where I was, I told you, you gotta get here because tonight's gonna be the night. This was all standing corn. We had about an acre and a half of standing corn back here. And this is right up against the sanctuary back here. You remember that I told you, you just watch up there, there's a trail that comes I know, the, the opening's still there. That's where yeah. they're coming through. So, that's what you were telling me. Dad, the bucks are coming. The bucks are coming. And he just he came down through the corn, steps out right out here, right out in the open. And it was the one deer that I wanted to kill. I knew he was probably a six-year-old. And, okay. and it was time for him to get off the property. I definitely want to continue hunting with them, and I asked him if we could go back to the exact spot because I feel like that's my sweet spot now. But I'm looking forward to the season for sure. I've got my own gear this year, so no more wearing dad's old stuff. 
When I imagined buying a piece of property, I imagined sharing moments like that with your kids and your grandkids. I can't wait to get, I have a two-year-old grand, I can't wait to get her in a blind and just teach her about that stuff. And as I learn it, you know, I can pass that stuff down to her. That's really what it was all about to me, was about the family connection to the land and sharing a dream and watching them smile as they enjoy it and just sit back and watch. Mom sent us a picture this morning. It was two years ago today and we were all here and we were taking Julia for the first time and she was maybe five, six months old or so and we were by Gigi's Pond and it was completely overgrown. There was moss over the top. It has completely transformed since then, just even that short amount of time. But also cool because we have these memories already, some snapshots yeah. of us here while it's been transforming and changing as much as it has. Honestly, what I know I'll remember him by is this. Like this kind of stuff, this is what it is. That's who he is. I think where he's most at peace. I get to come out here maybe once a week and those are my favorite times. Even just driving around and him showing me different projects and things he's doing because that's my dad. Like there, that's him 110%. That's probably going to be my favorite part, not killing a deer. It's about creating an environment where they can enjoy it. That's what it's really going to be about.